Results are in. Brazil's incumbent president Dilma Rousseff has beat out challenger Osio Neves, scoring another four years in office. Stephen Gibbs joins us live from Rio de Janeiro with the latest on this nail-biting election. Stephen, what a close race with 99 percent of the votes counted. Rousseff claims nearly 52 percent to Neves 48 percent. What is the general reaction? Oh, I think the general re reaction is amazement as just how close this was. That is by far the closest election in Brazil's history. A far narrower majority for Dilma Rousseff than she got in 2010. Far less than her predecessor, President Lula, from the same Workers' Party got in his two election campaigns. He got over 60 percent. So now people are really mulling on what that means for the country, for Dilma Rousseff, who now rules with that very, very narrow majority. Stephen, Brazil obviously clearly divided that at this point with 48 percent of the vote voting for Neves. How can Rousseff satisfy the other half of Brazil who wanted him to take office? Yeah, I mean, that is without question the big challenge for Dilma Rousseff. This has revealed divisions in the nation of Brazil. I think it's important not to overstate it. It's not like a polarized country that you might see somewhere like Venezuela, where you're either with the government or you're against it. It's a bit more subtle than that. It certainly reflects uh, a division between the rich and poor here, with the majority of poor people voting for Dilma Rousseff, the majority of rich people voting for Ayesio Neves. But you don't get over 48 percent of the vote, as he did, if you've only got the poorer people voting for him. So uh, what will Dilma Rousseff do now? I think her biggest challenge is in some of the states, particularly Sao Paulo, a state of over 43 million people. 64 percent of that vital state in this country voted for Ayesio Neves. That's it's the financial heartland of this country. So to, to regain the support or at least the sympathy of those people that have just voted against her that are really so crucial for the economic future of this country, I think it's probably all about the economy. She's already implied and said that she will regroup a bit her e economic team, her financial team. The finance minister has already said he will be standing down for personal reasons. But the key thing is whether she can lift this, frankly, rather stagnant economy. It's technically in recession. And if she doesn't, it's a very difficult rule, very difficult four years she has ahead of her. Stephen, what is next for Neves and his party? What will he do next? Well, sometimes in these occasions, it's not so bad to lose, perhaps, and particularly to lose so narrowly, because Dilma Rousseff has the challenge of taking Brazil forward in a pretty difficult economic time, with inflation going up, with the general economic figures not looking so good. The only good one, really, is very low unemployment. Now, Ayesio Neves can say that almost half the country voted for him and voted, in effect, for the party that he leads. So any mistake by Dilma Rousseff, they'll be sort of waiting to pounce upon. But I'm sure, personally, this is a huge disappointment for him to come so close and from so far behind. You have to remember this has been a two-round election. In the first round, at the beginning of the first round, he was pretty much written off and a surge of support for him got him through to the second round, and then he almost made it in the, in the second round there. So he's very much the man to watch, the man in the wings, and I suspect he's already thinking about a possible uh, another go in 2018. Probably so. Stephen Gibbs reporting live from Rio de Janeiro. Thank you for bringing us up to date.